In this tutorial, we're going to talk about Honeybee. Honeybee is a tool that allows us to create and visualize daylight simulations using Radiance, energy models using Energy Plus and Open Studio. And this tool is one of the most comprehensive plugins available for environmental design. And today you're going to find out how it works. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like you to take a look, I'd like you to go to this webpage, Ladybug Tools uh, Honeybee, and this is where you'll get an understanding of what this tool can actually do. You can see a lot of different uh, options and a lot of different analysis, environmental analysis that you can do with this tool. And this is a great start if you want to explore and go in, uh, in depth about how to approach this tool and how you can use it for your own projects. Uh, so now this is this is like uh, the place where you'll find a lot of examples. And if you want to install the plugins, you need to go to Food for Rhino and install these uh, legacy plugins here for Rhino 6 and Rhino 7. Okay, so now let's go to Rhino and let's take a look and let's see how this plugin would work. So before I start explaining um, how this works, uh, let me just show you what we have here in the viewport. So we have a simple, simple box and uh, we have some places where we want our windows to be located. So uh, in this case, uh, for this uh, for this analysis, we're going to use only one room. And the area of this room is going to represent the result that we're gonna get out of our analysis period that we set here. How does this work? Before I start to explain this from, from the beginning, uh, first thing that I want to do, I want to show you what the final result uh, is going to be. Let's take a look and let's see what the final result of this uh, simulation will be. Okay, so here is the result that uh, that we got. And let me just uh, hide this so you have a better uh, idea of what we what we have here. So I'm going to uh, hide this guy so you have a better view. You can see here that we have only the radiance in this area. This is the only uh, area of the room that's gonna be uh, populated with uh, the light, light source. And why is this? Uh, the reason is uh, uh, because we only added this window. So this, this window is the only one that is added into the calculations for this room. So this means that only uh, the light is gonna go through this room, uh, through this window. And you can see how the lighting will affect our room. And this is based on these uh, percentages. You can see here uh, what is the percentage of light per year that's gonna uh, enter our room. Now I'm gonna show you how we actually create those windows and how we create those calculations and also this, this room that we're evaluating. So let's let's start. Before that, I'm going to turn off these calculations now. So I'm gonna put it back to false. This is, uh, this is the place where you will activate the calculations. And this is, uh, this is the place where you actually run the simulation. So before running the simulation, of course, uh, you need to uh, to add some inputs. So this area here, uh, all of this area are the inputs. This part represents uh, so-called recipe or the simulation elements. And this, these elements here represent the final output that we want to uh, to see or to to see what the calculations uh, did at the end. So you can you can take a look at this and you can see that it's divided into three three big uh, areas. Uh, these three. And now let's go step by step and let's. And let, let's see how we can set this up. I'm going to, of course, uncover this uh, guy now. And uh, you can see here, if I uncover everything that I have, I have one surface here, I have one big uh, room, and I also have uh, four surfaces. And you can see that these surfaces are separate and they're actually representing the windows that I want to create for this room. Keep in mind that uh, this is strictly up to you to decide what is the size of these windows and how big the windows you want to be. You can put them on this side, on that side at, at the end. It's up to you to decide how you want to evaluate the, uh, the space. But the first thing is that uh, you need to set up these two components. It's a ladybug component and also honeybee component. You need to add a default folder. Usually, I, here I can see that I put honeybee folder, and this is the folder where all of these files will be located. It's really important that you have uh, this folder set up so all of the files for calculations can go into that folder. So the main component that, uh, that we need to, to set up here is called um, masses, uh, masses to Zones. So this is, this is a component that you can find here uh, in honeybee. It's located here. And uh, this actually converts the geometry from BREP, from our geometry, to, uh, to the file that can be read by, by Honeybee. So you can see here it says close BREP and here it says 
all of the information that is that is located in this file we also have here a toggle set to true and if you remember i told you from uh, from the last tutorial that every single time you have like uh, like this kind of dash uh, in front uh, that's uh, those are the the inputs that it's it's good to have uh, inside so for example these ones are not necessary but these ones uh, here uh, are you, you're supposed to have in this case we, we don't have these because they're set to default material first we have these kind of zones and you can see that when I open this, uh, this is uh, this is gonna gonna be our room that we want to evaluate. After that, we have this element, and this element is used for us to add windows. So you can find it here. It's located here, and you can see here we have honeybee object, and then we have child surfaces, and this is the place where you will put your surface. So in this case, we only have one surface set up here. But let's say that now we want to check out all of these surfaces. So what we can do, we can select all of these guys, we can clear this guy here, and we can say set multiple surfaces. Okay, so now you can see that we have these certain surfaces set up, and that means when we're doing the calculations later on, that means that the light source is gonna calculate uh, all of these windows. So not just the one window that we had before, but all of them. So you can set up that here, and on top of this, you also have uh, a component called ha uh, Honeybee uh, Create Surface. And this is just one surface that we have here in front. And usually it's advisable that you have one single surface because the, the calculations are going to be more precise if you have something in front of your room that you want to test. We have a simple surface here and we convert this uh, surface to a Honeybee element. Now we put all of this, we put this surface and we put this guy into the input here of Honeybee Run Data Simulation. So this simulation can be found here. This is where uh, it's it's located, and this is our main uh, this is our main component. This component is going to determine what is the thing that we want to evaluate. In this case, we're evaluating the uh, annual uh, daylight simulation. How do we how do we uh, say to Honeybee, okay, but what is the sun location? What is the location of our, of our file? And what is the location of our project where we want to test this? Because all of this that you see here is based on real world data. And that's why uh, we need to, to say to Honeybee, okay, I want to, to calculate this position on Earth. So this is where this element comes in handy. And you can see that we have here a component called uh, Open EPW and stat weather files. So what this does, this allows us to pretty much use a link that we can find online, and we can go to this uh, to this website that's called uh, Energy Plus. And on this website, if you go to the weather element here, and you will see that we have some locations here that we can find. So all you, all we did here, uh, I just found, for example, I think I found uh, Central America or something, and then I chose uh, let's say USA here. And all you need to do is, let's say, click on Michigan. And uh, now you just need to click on, let's say, any kind of location. So I'm going to right click here, copy link address. And this is the address that uh, you need to put here. And that's all you're going to need to do. So I'm going to paste this. And now this is like a valid location that you just need to connect if you want that particular location. So you can take a look at these locations that are, that are available here and choose the one that you want to test out. Once you have the, the given location, all you need to do is connect this weather file URL and then uh, we're ready almost to do our uh, simulation. Before that, we also need to uh, determine how this simulation is going to look like and, and what is the density of the grid that we want to show. This is where uh, the Honeybee Generate Zone Test Points uh, component com comes in handy. This component is located here and what it does it allows us to, to use this zone. So we're using we're using this uh, position because we already set up. We said here, okay, this is the windows and these were like the whole room. And now Honeybee knows that these are the openings and we want to test that guy and we want to use it as a zone. And then in that zone inside, we want to make this grid. And you can see how there is a lot of these test points uh, inside of our room. And that's where you would draw, uh, you would you know create this this grid, and based on this grid size, you can you can decide how deep you want to go with your calculations. So, for example, if I change this to let's say 0 0.6, if 
I click OK, you will see that the grid size will increase. So this really depends on how complex your project is and how detailed you want these calculations to go. But of course, if you have, you know, very big uh, building, then you, you don't need big grids. But it really also depends on how deep you want to calculate. So let's go to 0.1 because we were just calculating for one, one room. And you can see we have very dense grid. That means that our result is also going to be quite, quite good. After that, we need a component called uh, Honeybee Annual Daylight Simulation. So this component actually takes all of this information that we have here. You can see that it has all of the inputs that we need and it's located also here. And this big one is located here and it's just used to run, uh, to run the whole simulation. So here you can see that we have set up the weather file that we took from this location. That means, okay, we want to test uh, this uh, region. And we have also the test points, which came from this grid, also the vectors that came from this grid, and also the test mesh that came from this grid. So all of the inputs from here, we put inside. And then we have a so-called, you can see here it says, uh, analysis recipe. That's how it's called, that's the naming that uh, we're using here. And then when you want to run the simulation, you can see that we have, uh, again, same, uh, same input, we have analysis recipe. And we have a couple of interesting inputs here. The ones that you need to pay attention to are the first one, which are honeybee objects. So if you remember, we created this surface before, we created this room and we created the openings. And all of these three elements are located here at the, at the beginning. So, so this guy, this guy, and this guy. That's why all of them need to go at the end in the uh, honeybee objects because they are used to uh, calculate our simulation. That's why you can see that uh, this guy is going into the B-Rep and then B-Rep is going to this object and then the surface is also going to the same to the same end. After that we have uh, the main button and this is this is the main toggle button that is going to uh, run our simulation. That's why you can see here it says write a rad ra radiance file and run radiance file. Uh, then uh, next to that we have a number of CPUs. This is uh, the number of, of um, CPU cores that you have in your system or that you want to use for this calculation. In this case, I have, I have 30, uh, 32 uh, cores, but I want to use only 16. And that's why I put here the 16 um, cores. And then uh, next to that is the work, uh, working uh, uh, directory. This is uh, the, same, uh, the same file that I used at the beginning to start my, my project. And that's uh, what's, what's going inside here. And this is just a name. This is just the name of that file and how it's going to be called at the end. After we, 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 we've done this, if we just run this, nothing is going to show because we actually need to say to Hanabi, okay, I, I know what I need to do. I know the simulation that I want to do, but how are you going to see that simulation? And this is the third, the third segment that is kind of tricky to, to understand on, on how, how this is going to be translated into visual, visual geometry. Okay, so let's take a look. So what we have here, uh, we have a component called Honeybee Read Annual Result. So you can see it here, it's here Honeybee Read Annual Result. We have here the, the simulation that we did and this is how we are supposed to read this file. Uh, we, we have a couple of inputs that, that we need to do. We do the results files, we actually connect these guys with the files address here and then uh, we also have the test points and these test points are the ones that we created previously. If you remember we did this, this kind of grid and these are the test points that came from our recipe here, from our points and they're translated all the way until here where we actually need to read this data now. Uh, then we have the occupancy files. This is something that is not necessary to put, but uh, we have it here because this is going to give us uh, some sort of like a period that you want to test. In this case, uh, this means that uh, this is a default. It means it's gonna run for the whole year and uh, that's, that's, that's gonna be located here. The next thing that we need to put here is the toggle set to true. It means that if you don't have this setup as true, then it's not gonna run. It's not gonna run the, the results. So you want to make sure you have the toggle set to true. And then after we have all of that, then it's time here now to create the geometry from those results. And the way that this works, 
uh, is a little bit tricky. The things that you need to, to do is here, you have this kind of uh, DLA output and it says here what it is. It's daylight autonomy, percentage of the time during the active occupancy hours that the test point receives more daylight than the luminance threshold. This means that uh, this is going to be the result from, from these test points. And these results are going to be taken into this component that's called Ladybug Recolor Mesh. And what this mesh will allow us to do, it will allow us to visualize our result. So here we have that result, and then we have a couple of other things we need to put. Uh, here you have uh, the, the mesh itself. So right now it's not, uh, nothing is going on because we didn't run the simulation because it's false. But once we click on, on true here, it's going to run the simulation and this is going to be populated with info that uh, is going to be uh, translated afterwards into the mesh here. And then uh, it's important to, to set up this domain. And this is, it says here, you can put here, uh, if you want this result to be a 3D mesh that can be visible, it's good that you set up the domain. For example, here we have the domain from, I think from 0 to 0, uh, 0 0.3. And you can even put this uh, smaller or higher. It really doesn't matter. This is just for us to visually understand what's going on here in our room. The next thing that we have here is the legend uh, parameter. And uh, this is the same thing we used uh, previously from Ladybug from the last tutorial, if you remember. We used, uh, we used here the number of segments uh, that we want uh, to have for our legend. And we have this component that's called Ladybug Gradient Library. And this one allows us to have uh, some sort of gradient from blue to red, which will represent the cold areas and uh, uh, the warm areas of, of our um, tested, tested location. So we, go, we, uh, we put that into the custom colors. And then this, this legend parameter goes into our input here. And then the next thing here is to just put the title of our legend. Later on, if you want to bake this for our you know, uh, diagrams, if you want to create a diagram from this, uh, and also the layer that, uh, that we want to call in Rhino. And now let's test this. Let's see how this will work. Remember, all of this is going to be divided into three segments. This is the segment for the inputs. This is the segment for the simulation recipe, what we need to test. And this is the result. This is the uh, visualizing of our result of our test. So we have three, uh, three uh, segments that we run through. And now if you want to activate all of this and if you want to see the simulation in action, all you need to do is press true here. Once you press true here, then this is going to run the simulation. If you remember, we put this to be 16 CPUs. And now let me just show you, I'm not going to show the whole simulation because it's going to take some time, but I'm going to show you the sped up version. So let's click on the true. And you can see how uh, my, my windows now uh, are popping up and these are all the calculations that are happening in the background. And um, now let's wait for this to finish and let's see the final result. Okay, so after a couple of minutes, uh, we got our result. And now let me just hide this for a second. Let me show you uh, what we come up with uh, at the end. So you can see now here that uh, that we have, we have a diagram that shows the percentage of heat and the percentage of sunlight that's gonna come uh, into this room uh, on an annual, annual rate. And you can see how like this area here is completely red uh, and that's because of these windows that we have here. And the area in the back is completely blue. That means that the sunlight is not gonna reach, reach, uh, reach these areas. So this is something that you can use when you're thinking about the design and uh, what you can do to, to create some kind of shading uh, to protect to protect this area from sun. So this is this is the final result. And of course. Uh, this is just one one simple uh, example of one room. You can also do this for uh, big buildings and for many rooms, not just this room. This is just the simplest example that I want to share with you to show you how, how this can be done. And of course, now if you want uh, to bake this uh, and if you want to save this result, all you need to do is click here on the true and it will create the honeybee room analysis uh, layer. And you can see here that now if I select this guy, uh, it's going to be it's going to be uh, located here. So if I simply select all of this, and if I let's say copy it here, you will see that I'm gonna get I'm gonna get all of these. Uh, information you know so now I can use this to make some sort of a diagram if I want I can maybe do some extract uh, wireframe and then 
uh, you know, I can do the same thing with, uh, with my windows and I can see how my room will look um, based on the weather file that, that we put and based on orientation. Now, if you'd like to know a bit more about Honeybee, you can check out our extended tutorial on Patreon. Here, I'll be showing you how to include window shading in your calculations for the annual daylight and how this given geometry will directly influence your diagram results. On top of that, we're also going to include the sunpad diagram from our previous tutorial, so we have a more complete understanding of how the sunlight will affect our project. One big shout out to our Patreon supporters. Your support means a lot to us as it helps us to focus on creating these tutorials. Let me remind you that if you join us on Patreon, you will get exclusive Patreon-only tutorials that contain both project files and extended versions of our tutorials. You can check that page out, the link is in the description. If you'd like a structured step-by-step -step approach in learning Rhino and Grasshopper architectural presentation, animation, rendering, you can apply for our Rhino for Architects 2.0 course, first link in the description.